Hello and welcome to Krishi Jagran Business Platform that keeps you updated with all the agri news of the nation. This is your Saksena. Let's take a quick look at the top headlines of the day. To promote International Year of Millets 2023, Union Agri Minister organizes Millets Only Lunch at his residence today. Upsurge of COVID-19 cases in China, Indian government issues warning and asks citizens to take precautions. Government denies a fertilizer shortage. Farmers complain about a lack of key nutrient. 1260 Mondays on boarded on ENAM in 25 states and union territories so far, says Narendra Singh Tomar. Reliance to acquire Metro AG's India business for approximately 3000 crore rupees. Bharat Sirtis Agri Science Limited organizes training camp for farmers. More than 300 farmers showed up at the event. National Health Authority announces Digital Health Incentive Scheme offers up to Rs 4 crore to hospitals, lab and digital health solution providers. Good news, farmers can now take up to 3 lakh loan through Kisan credit card. To protect veggies from frost, Punjab Agriculture University shares measures with farmers. 63 lakh farmers trained by Indian Council of Agricultural Research, KVK's institutes in last 4 years. Good news for sugarcane farmers, UP government launches 24-7 sugarcane helpline number to solve farmers' problems. Jammu and Kashmir's administrative efforts help locally produced agri goods reach global markets. Maharashtra farmers worried by poor chili crops due to increasing pest attacks. IRRI collaborates with Indonesian government to help rice farmers make science-based decisions. Double attack of cold and fog in North India, rain expected in many states of the nation. Now the news in detail. Well, millets is the buzzword these days. Today, Union Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar hosted a very special millets only lunch at his residence. Union Minister of State Kailash Chaudhary was seen enjoying millet made recipes along with Manoj Ahuja, Secretary of the Agri Department, and many other top officials and representatives from the Ministry of Agriculture who attended the lunch. These are no less than celebration times for Indians who are looking forward to the next year of 2023 as the International Year of Millets. Look what Minister of State Kailash Chaudhary told Prichy Jagran's team at the event. Now we are with Raja Mantri Kailash Chaudhary. Sir, like we have taken a political initiative, we have also started with our voice. So sir, what will you see from this perspective? और इसी को लेकर आज देश भर के अंदर इसको अधिक से अधिक जाए क्योंकि ये पहले हमारा मूल जनी मिलेट सुबह करता था गेहूं और चावल तो बाद में आए और उस समय गांवों के अंदर भी आज भी किसी प्रकार की बीमारी भी नहीं हुआ करती थी गांवों के अंदर जब दूसरे बोलने में केमिकल जो भोजन आने लगा खाने लगे तो उसके बाद में कैंसर जैसे और डायबिटीज जैसे होने लगे लेकिन मिलेट्स एक ऐसा फूड है जो आदमी खाता है उसके अंदर किसी प्रकार की कोई बीमारी भी नहीं है और इसको लेकर जो जिस तरह से हेल्थ की दृष्टि से भी बहुत अच्छा है तो आने वाले समय के अंदर मिलेट्स ये कि हर गांव के अंदर मिलेट्स जाए और हर थाली के अंदर जो भी सम ऑफ द डिशेस डेट वन कुड सी वर बाजरा चूरमा बाजरा खीर बाजरा रोटी कैरेट हलवा गार्लिक चटनी एंड कड़ी बीइंग रिलिश्ड बाय द अटेंडेंट्स द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट नोटिफाइड मिलेट्स एज न्यूट्रिशियस सीरियल इन अप्रैल 2018 एंड मिलेट वाज इंक्लूडेड इन द पोषण मिशन कैंपेन बट रिसेंटली द यूनाइटेड नेशंस हैज डिक्लेयर्ड 2023 एज द इंटरनेशनल ईयर ऑफ मिलेट्स एंड द वर्ल्ड कुड बी सीन सेलिब्रेटिंग दीस गोल्डन ग्रेन्स Krishi Jagran in support of the Indian government is also taking such initiatives to celebrate the International Year of Millets and will soon be unveiling its special edition on Millets next month in January 2023. After the upsurge of COVID-19 cases in China, the Indian government issued warnings and appraises the citizens to take precautions. Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare Dr. Mansukh Mandavia chaired a meeting to discuss the COVID-19 situation in India and public health. The preparedness of the public health at the wake of surging COVID-19 cases around the globe along with COVID surveillance 
containment and management around the country were discussed in the meeting yesterday. He emphasized the need of remaining alert against emerging strains, especially during the upcoming festive season. Affirming that COVID is not gone yet, he urged the citizens to follow. COVID protocols in the public spheres and to complete vaccination. Positive samples are advised to be sent to Indian SARS-CoV-2 Genomic Consortium, Consortium Labs to track any new variants. The meeting was planned after the sudden surge of COVID cases in China, Japan, South Korea, France and the United States. Reports of shortages, particularly of non-urea-based diammonium phosphate, come in the middle of a busy Rabi or winter sown cropping season which accounts for nearly half of the country's annual food output, ranging from wheat to lentils and oil seeds. The center has denied report of shortage of fertilizers amid peak winter sowing across the country. Yet, farmers in some regions reported scarcity of key crop nutrient known as DAP, especially in Bihar, where cultivators reported black marketing and price gauge. A plentiful winter harvest which will hit markets next year is critical for Asia's third largest economy as extreme weather shriveled both wheat and rice crops this year, sending federally held stock to multi-year lows. The centre informed Parliament on Tuesday that 1260 wholesale mandis spread across 22 states and three union territories have been integrated with the electronic natural agriculture market called ENA. Agriculture Minister Narin Singh Tomar stated in a written response to Lok Sabha that 1260 mandis from 22 states and 3 UTs had been integrated with ENAM platform. Furthermore, the central government is integrating mandis with the ENAM platform based on the proposals, detailed project reports received from the states and union territories. The minister stated that approximately 700 crores has been made available since inception for the integration of mandis with the ENAM platform. Reliance Industries Limited will acquire German firm Metro AG's wholesale operation in India for approximately 3,000 crores as the conglomerate run by billionaire Mukesh Ambani seeks to strengthen its dominant position in the India's mammoth retail sector. Reliance Retail Ventures Limited, a subsidiary of Reliance Industries Limited, today signed a definitive agreement to acquire 100% equity stake in Metro Cash and Carry India. Through this acquisition, Reliance Retail will get access to network of Metro India stores located in prime locations across key cities along with a large base of registered Kiranas and other institutional customers and strong supply network. Bharat Certis Agri Science Limited, one of India's leading platform to deliver solutions to farmers for sustainable farming, organized two farmer training programs in villages of Kheda and Rupana of Bhavan of Bhivani district Hisar. The prime focus of the event was to educate farmers on sustainable agriculture and soil health management practices. The event witnessed the footfall of more than 300 farmers. During the program, agriculture experts Dr. Pradeep Chahal, agriculture scientist Haryana Agriculture University and Dr. Raghubir Singh, block agriculture officer, trained the farmers on modern techniques for cultivation of wheat crops. Bharat Certis Agri Science Limited, a group company of Mitsui and Co Limited, Japan has undertaken many activities in the field of sustainable agriculture. Soil health, apart from training the company, lays down practical seeds to harvest demonstration of agricultural techniques in farmers' field. During this event, the Sarpanch from all the adopted villages also participated. They advised the farmers to follow the advice provided by the experts for maximizing the productivity of wheat crop. Both these events were addressed by Mr. Swapnil Singh, Assistant Marketing Manager and Mr. Anuj Kumar, Territory in Charge, Hisar of Bharat Service Agri Science Limited. The National Health Authority has announced a digital health incentive scheme for the stakeholders of the digital health ecosystem. The scheme aims to give a further boost to digital health transactions in the country under Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission. The incentives under the scheme would be provided to hospitals and diagnostic labs and also to the providers of digital health solutions such as hospitals, health management information systems and laboratory management information systems. Elaborating on the same, Dr. R.S. Sharma, CEO of NHA said, we believe that the scheme will encourage more and more healthcare facilities and digital software companies to come forward and join Atmanirbhar Bharat Digital Mission for providing patient-centric healthcare. Through this financial incentive scheme, we are encouraging the adoption of digital health. If you are a farm and you have got a Kisan credit card made, then you can get the benefit of up to Rs 3 lakh by the government. Because under the Kisan credit card scheme, the government gives benefits of up to Rs 3 lakh to the farmers. 
The central government is running the Kisan Credit Card Scheme, also known as KCC Scheme, to provide loans to farmers in need of money for agricultural works. Under this, loans are given to farmers at the lowest interest rate, up to 3% interest rate rebate is also given on timely deposit of the loan. A large number of farmers are taking advantage of the Kisan Credit Card scheme in the country. Through this scheme, the loan can be given to every farmer whose age is between 18 to 75 years. Loans are given for many types of agriculture related works including manure seeds, agriculture machines and fish farming and animal husbandry. Mild freezing causes short streaks or pitting in petiole which darken with additional storage. Protecting winter vegetables from frost damage is something that experts from Punjab Agriculture University have advised vegetable growers to do this season. The surface temperature of plants can fall below freezing as the air temperature approaches freezing, which causes ice crystals to form similarly to how drew does on warm nights. According to PAU Vice Chancellor Dr. Sadhbir Singh Gosal, numerous biotic and abiotic issues have a significant negative impact on vegetable production. Gosal also urged the farmers to use the PAU recommended techniques in order to increase yield and market value. The use of plastic mulch, according to Dr. Tarsim Singh Dhilno, head of Department of Vegetable Science, has many positive effects on the crop production, including protection from the frost damage, an increase in soil temperature, preservation of soil moisture, texture and fertility, and the management of weeds, pests, and diseases. By retaining moisture and raising the soil temperature close to the plant, it also permits the growth of crop earlier this season and shields the plant from the frost. Indian Council of Agricultural Research has taken multiple initiatives to improve and develop new technologies in the farm sectors around the country. An estimated number of 2,122 new crop varieties have been introduced since the last nine years. It is also reported that KVKs and the ICR institutes in the last three years trained more than 62.99 lakh farmers. In the last three years and the current year, training of 62.99 lakh farmers and 1.49 lakhs on farm trials and 10.29 lakh field level demonstrations were conducted by the KVKs and ICR Institute. Krishi Vigyan Kins are responsible for disseminating knowledge based activities such as on farm testing of location specific tech, frontline demonstration of improved agricultural technologies, capacity development of farmers, knowledge and skill upgradation, providing farm advisories and production and distribution of quality seeds as well as planting material. India is the second largest producer of sugarcane. Sugarcane products and sugar are being exported on large scale here. Maximum sugarcane is available in the country from UP where the government has taken a big step to reduce the difficulties of the farmers. A helpline number and control room equipped with modern facilities have been set up for the sugarcane farmers. It has been established by the Sugarcane Development Department of UP where farmers can get solutions to their problems by calling. This helpline number on which farmers can call 24-7, that means anytime and share the problems they are facing from sugarcane cultivation to marketing. After this, the experienced person sitting in control room will solve the problems of the sugarcane farmers. Regarding the facility of 24-7 helpline numbers issued for sugarcane farmers of UP, Additional Chief Secretary of Sugarcane Development Department, Sanjay Bhusaredi, told that the work of the people working in the control room connected with this troll-free number will be easier. The control room has been equipped with high-tech and modern facilities to make it robust. In the last three years, the brand Jammu and Kashmir has grown in popularity throughout the country and around the world. According to reports, local Jammu and Kashmir products have flooded the markets and their demand is growing day by day. This increase in demand has given new life to Jammu and Kashmir's locally produced goods. Young people are coming up with new ideas and innovations to capitalize on the potential of local goods in the union territory. The administration of Jammu and Kashmir recently formed an expert committee to develop an export promotion policy for the union territory to increase annual agricultural export from the region. Over the next five years, the panel will identify agriculture commodities and increase agricultural exports from Rs 190 crores to 3000 crores. The idea for promoting brand Jammu and Kashmir came from Prime Minister Narendra Modi led Union government after it abolished JNK's special status under Article 375 of the Constitution and divided the state into two union territories of JNK and Ladakh on August 5, 2019. The effect of climate change is now visible on crops in Maharashtra. Its effect is more on chili crops. The outbreak of brown disease is increasing on chili crops due to cloudy weather. 
Due to this, there can be huge decline in production. The farmers are facing huge economic losses. Let us tell you that the maximum cultivation of chili is done in Nandurbar district. There is a severe cold in some parts of the state, while in some parts the picture is more cloudy. The farmer is worried about the changing weather. The attack of insects is increasing rapidly due to the impact of climate change on agricultural crops. This is causing huge economic loss to the farmers. Chili farmers of Nandurbar districts are scared due to the changing weather patterns. The International Rice Research Institute recently held an inception workshop in Jakarta, Indonesia with the Indonesian government and the country's leading telecommunication provider to support Indonesian rice farmers with science-based decision making and contribute to Indonesian government's goal of rural prosperity. IRRI signed a MOU with the Ministry of National Development Planning during the workshop along with a letter of intent to collaborate with the Indonesian Agency for Agricultural Instrument Standardization of the Ministry of Agriculture of the Republic of Indonesia. Furthermore, the RRI also signed a letter of agreement with Viamo, the country's leading telecom service provider who implements its rice crop manager project. The RCM project will create and disseminate a digital agriculture platform that will provide science-based information to help rice production become more efficient. These days, the double attack of cold and fog continues in the entire North India, including Delhi and CR. A continuous drop in temperature is being recorded in these states. At the same time, the dense fog in the morning and evening has increased with the problems of the people. Be it road traffic or rail and air, all are affected by the dense fog. On the other hand, the meteorological department has expressed the possibility of rain in many states of the South India. Severe cold has started in the surrounding areas, including the national capital Delhi. Meanwhile, the minimum temperature is likely to reach 6 degrees Celsius on Thursday. At the same time, the maximum temperature during this time will be 21 degrees Celsius. With the increasing cold here, the fog sheet is getting denser, due to which the visibility in the morning and evening is very low. Because of this, traffic has been greatly affected and accidents are also being seen in many areas. Visibility reduced to 400 meters on Wednesday morning. If we talk about the pollution here, the AQI was recorded 360 in the Anand Vihar area on Wednesday evening, which comes in the very poor category. So this was all about the news. Let's take a look at today's quiz question. The question is on your screens. NPV is mostly used to control. Option A, Lepidopetra. Option B, Hymenopetra. Option C, Thysanopetra. Or option D, Hemipetra. You can reply to us via SMS on the number 8880023204. For more updates on Agri News, stay tuned with Fishy Jagran Business. This is Yash Saxena, signing off.